Hello folks, welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. This is Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So we are again back with our motivational image of this rover on Mars. And uh, we want to use this sort of background image to help us remember that uh, the algorithms that we are trying to uh, develop and analyze are eventually to support systems such as these uh, to be driven autonomously. So without any further delay, let me sort of give you a little bit of recap on what we were doing until last time and what we plan to do now. So before today uh, we were talking about this notion of babalat's lemma we gave you know sort of two different versions of this lemma right so we uh, sort of spoke about this integrability condition and we also spoke about a corollary which contain which is in terms of this l infinity and lp functions and so on and so forth all right and then in order to illustrate how useful this tool is, we um, started talking about the spring mass damper example. Um, the important thing to note in this example and the way we did this analysis was the uh, sort of standardization of the steps. Okay, so the steps starting from this, you know, uh, step number one right here were essentially very very standard steps um, in our analysis and what i sort of reiterated again and again is that these steps are going to remain identical um, every single time we try to use the babalat's lemma uh, to do the signal chasing analysis all right so this is what i uh, was sort of hoping that all of you would uh, remember for sure okay so so these are very very standard steps and then you know we also uh, you know saw how you move from proving the terms in the v dot go to zero to proving that the other terms that is the terms that are not in v dot also go to zero using the original babalat slam all right so so we uh, sort of claim that uh, this is a very, very uh, generic or, or a more general purpose theorem, which can be used to prove convergence, okay? So this was another thing we uh, stated very carefully. At the end of this analysis, we can prove that our signals converge to zero and further that our signals remain bounded, okay? So these are the two things we prove. We have not yet spoken about stability, but we will uh, do so in the subsequent lectures. Yeah. And we also said that this is more general purpose and application than something like a LaSalle invariance principle in its, you know, classical form. Yeah. Um, and in order to illustrate this is why I have given this exercise number four, where you have these time varying gains in the system now. And the Bablat's lemma is still applicable to these systems in order to prove convergence of signals, boundedness of signals. So systems such as 3.25 are not uh, analyzable using the LaSalle invariance principle. Right. So now that we have seen the Bablat's lemma, and of course the other associated very, very critical lemmas, we should keep in mind that. Babalat's lemma was not the only result that we saw. Okay, we also saw these other uh, lemmas on, you know, the existence of bound of functions and the lemma on uniform continuity of functions. Okay, so we had these two other rather critical lemmas also appearing. 
all right so great great so now that uh, we have seen the bubble at lemma what we want to do is we want to start looking at the notions of stability so now please don't worry this says week three lectures but we are still only in week two okay so it doesn't matter we are advancing a little bit into the week three lectures also right now because um, in the future we anticipate more um, the, the material to get more involved and therefore if we advanced further into the uh, you know later week lectures there is no issue okay so what we want to talk about now is the notion of stability in the sense of Lyapunov. Okay. Now, before we um, actually delve into stability, um, we sort of want to uh, give a setup of what kind of systems we are talking about. Okay. So, of course, we say stability in the sense of Lyapunov, and this is due to you know this is due to A M Lyapunov. Okay. And of course, somewhere 1800s, you know, in mid 1800s is when he came up with these uh, sort of stability notions and also gave uh, useful tests for stability. Okay, so rather critical, I would say, rather critical. Um, without the contribution of Lyapunov, uh, our entire field of nonlinear systems would be in a very, very primitive state. Okay. Without these results, uh, we would not have been able to analyze the stability of nonlinear systems. We would not have been able to talk about tracking. Um, so therefore, there would be no question of, you know, I mean, trying to understand how systems perform under feedback. Okay. So this, this is a, a seminal tool in nonlinear systems any nonlinear system so any nonlinear system scores or for nonlinear adaptive system scores is incomplete without a study of Lyapunov uh, stability notions and the theorems okay and so that's of course what we intend to look at so the typical system that is in consideration is a standard state space system yeah it's x dot equals f of x t so f is the you know vector field which is uh, determining how the system evolves over time okay so it's and you expect this to be a function of the state as well as the time so as you all of you know i assume x are the states and t is the time and the system is not specified unless and until i also give an initial condition what is the meaning of an initial condition it means that I specify at an initial time t naught and initial state x naught. Okay, so without this, without you know this uh, initial condition, the system is not considered to be fully specified. Okay, the other thing. To remember is that we always assume that this system that is this differential equation with these initial conditions has a unique solution okay and and uh, we have not discussed this here at all but what does it mean for a system to have a unique solution it means that given this initial condition there can be only one solution first of all that exists okay so i have to write it properly that that exists a solution okay so the first thing is that there has to be a solution it should not be that uh I take an initial condition, there is no solution beyond a certain time. That would be a problem. Okay, there exists a solution. And secondly, this solution is unique. Okay, secondly, the solution is unique. So this is uh, rather, rather important. Okay, uh, so 
one of the things to uh, sort of you know i mean um, remember is what is what is the condition uh, for existence of a unique solution so this means that f x t is lipschitz in x okay we need f x t to be lipschitz in the states okay this is the requirement for um, solutions to exist and be unique so now what is this lipschitz condition lipschitz in x and continuous in t okay we need well actually Lipschitz in X and piecewise continuous in T is fine, but I'm going to say continuous in time. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit more, um, you know, relaxed. Okay, so so what is you know, so of course we are saying so many things. So we want to understand where sort of uh, things can go wrong. All right. So let's see. Let's consider an example. Yeah. Say this system of the form x dot equals x squared okay and let's try to integrate and see what happens so so we of course give an initial condition of the form that is this so if i try to solve the system what do i get okay so i get dx over x squared equals dt and of course i integrate from t0 to t on both sides yeah, or actually on the left hand side this will be x0 to x of t okay and so what do i get here i will get something like minus 1 over xt plus 1 over x0 yeah so this is um yeah this is just using the standard integration formula for one over x squared yeah uh and this will be t minus t zero okay so if i actually solve for this what will i get for x t this will be um let's see let's look at this carefully uh this will be 1 over 1 by x0 minus t minus t0 all right i believe this will be the solution so yeah so this will be the integration of the left hand side and this is the integration of the right hand side then i take this guy to the right and this to the left right so i get and then i flip this uh, yeah then i do this take the inverse so i get something like this absolutely okay 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 so look at this what happens to the system right what happens to this system let's try to understand okay um if see so if uh t minus t0 is equal to 1 by x0 x of t blows up okay x of t blows up so basically bad things start to happen okay so black bad things start to happen at t minus t0 equal to 1 minus x0 equal to 1 over x0 okay and this is called finite time escape okay so the solution seems to exist until a certain time that is until until the time is uh right less than 
unless the time elapsed that is t minus t0 is less than 1 by x0 but at 1 by x0 the solution blows up so solution doesn't exist anymore okay so if i sort of change this a little bit i mean if i if i instead instead of doing this if i even change this a slight bit that is i make this uh, say x of t equal to sorry If I make this x dot equals x cubed instead of x squared with some initial condition as before, and I follow this entire sequence of steps, okay, as before, then what I will get is my solution will be x t is, um, let's see, right minus right so this will be square root of 1 over uh, let's see I want to be careful here so let me actually write it out so that I don't make a mistake if I make this uh, then I will integrate so I will get from here uh, minus 1 over twice x t squared plus 1 over twice x 0 squared equals t minus t 0 and from here I will get x t equal to square root of uh, let, uh, One okay, so this will be one by uh, one over x zero square minus two t minus t zero. Okay, so this is what you will have. So why did I make this slightly different? Why did I want to look at this slightly different case? Because if you look at this case. Yeah, if you look at this slightly different case, what happens is that here in this particular case, yeah, if I cross t minus t, if, if t minus t0 is greater than 1 by x0, if t minus t0 is larger than 1 by x0, solution still again start to exist. So the solution only doesn't exist at that one point that is t minus t0 equal to 1 by x0. Okay, but as soon as I change the power to x cubed, for example, then what happens is I get a square root here. Okay, so if I look at what happens in this case is you there. Uh, so in this case, no solution beyond uh, t minus t zero equal to 1 over twice x0 squared okay there is no solution beyond this okay because because after t minus t0 becomes larger than 1 over 2x0 squared this entire thing becomes a negative quantity and so you start getting an imaginary number okay so solution exists only until this point and never nothing beyond okay so so this is a problem system we do not want to consider systems of this kind okay so this is a case where solutions do not e exist or they have what is called a finite escape time so we don't like these kind of systems okay another example of systems that we don't like is the ones that have non-unique solutions okay what are such systems so that is so this is this was non-existence so then i have non-uniqueness okay so what are such systems so let me look at one example only okay suppose i take x dot equal to square root of x okay there i had the square here i have the square root so let's look at what happens okay and here i give x at zero 
equal to zero. I give initial time as exactly zero and initial state also at z as zero. All right, so let's see what happens. So again, I do integration as always. Yeah, so this is now, of course, zero to t and this is zero to x. Okay, so what do I get? I get, yeah, what do I get? So the here I get, uh, so this is x to the power minus half. So when I integrate, I will get two root x equals t. Okay, so which implies x equal to t by two whole squared. Okay. So this was x to the power minus half. So when I integrate, I get x to the power plus half divided by half. So that is 2 square root of x. Okay. And this is equal to t on the right hand side. So initial condition is initial time is 0 and initial state is 0. So I get this. So using this initial state 0, I have 0 here. Initial time 0, I have 0 here. Okay. So so now notice that this is definitely one solution that I found out of, you know, legitimately integrating this thing. Okay. Okay. So I found out of legitimately integrating this quantity. Now, uh, however, notice that x equal to 0 is also a solution yeah that is x staying ex exactly at zero is also a solution so if i make a picture for example just to illustrate what will it be so if i look at the uh, t and i look at x of t the amazing thing is that uh, there are two solutions right so x equal to 0 is a solution. Yeah, fine. Okay, let me not do this. Let me do it in a better way uh, so that we can actually see things. Yeah, so on the x axis is time, and on the y axis, I have the x of t. Then there are two possible solutions, right? So one is this, you know, x equal to 0 solution. Right. And the other is t squared by 4, which is some kind of a uh, hyper, like a parabola, right? The other solution is like a parabola. So it will be something like this. Right? So you have two solutions x equal to 0 and x equal to t squared by 4. Okay. So this is an example of a non-uniqueness of a solution, right? So both these cases are rather bad, okay? Because in in that earlier case, there was no existence of solution at all. So that is, of course, very bad. Right? In this case, what's happening is that at the, starting at the same initial condition, I can possibly get two paths in which the system can move. Now, you can imagine analyzing stability for such systems is really complicated, really difficult. In the first case, because I don't even know if solutions exist beyond a certain time. So I cannot guarantee anything about system properties beyond a certain time. And in this case, you know, I cannot even talk about stability because, you know, at a particular um, initial condition, paths seem to diverge. So I don't know how many paths there are and what happens on those paths. Yes, there are modern notions of stability which do deal with systems like these. But in our case, we don't consider such cases okay so what do we need we need the like i said we need the lipschitz condition so what is the lipschitz condition lipschitz condition is sort of a sublinearity condition i'm going to state only the global version local version you can look up there exists a positive l such that f of x t minus f of y t in the norm 
is less than or equal to L times norm of X minus Y. Okay, so this is what it means for a function to be Lipschitz in the X state argument. Okay, in the state argument. So this is what. This is called the Lipschitz condition. This is sort of a sublinearity condition. So it's not very difficult to see that in both these cases, right, this kind of a sublinearity condition will be violated. Okay. I would strongly encourage you to check that this sort of a Lipschitz condition is going to be violated. Yeah, for the examples that I have actually spoken about excellent so what is the setup we have a system a nonlinear system we have an initial condition and we usually denote our solutions by this so this is sort of a i would say uh, abuse of notation a strong abuse of notation if i may the solutions in general are always denoted by phi of t comma t0 comma x0 why why do we do this is because the solution is a depend is depending on time that's obvious but it also depends on the initial time and the initial state you know which is pre-specified here if i change the initial time and the initial state this definitely changes okay however for the purposes of you know uh, keeping our notation under control we what do we do we actually just call it x of t right just like we did here in all our examples we called the solution as x of t in fact if you noticed in all these cases the solution was a function of t initial time and initial state so it was actually a function of all these three quantities but we sort of suppress that in our expression just to keep things succinct however please do remember please do remember that it is very very critical to remember in fact that we are always talking about a solution with a pre-specified initial time and an initial state so the solution definitely depends on the initial time and the initial state okay there is no two ways about it all right great 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 so i just want to summarize you know what we spoke about today so what we discussed today was um, really just the setup okay for discussing nonlinear stability okay so stability of systems in the sense of lyapunov is a rather critical notion and we have simply just started discussing the setup of this okay so what is this setup it took us some time to talk about it because it is rather critical right what is this setup it is the idea that when you specify a system first of all you need to provide certain initial time and initial states so what is called initial conditions the second rather critical thing is that we need to sort of presuppose or pre-assume that there exist unique solutions to this system given this initial state and time all right now in order for that to happen we saw some counter examples of systems which either don't have a solution beyond a finite time or they don't have unique solutions given a certain initial condition we want to avoid both these sort of uh, systems and therefore we uh, assume something called the lipschitz continuity of the vector fields that is the fxt on the state x and we assume continuity in time all right and both of these conditions is what helps us to have existence of unique solutions of course we have not proven why this is the case that is slightly outside the purview of what we want to do uh, you can always look at the proof in standard references like nonlinear systems by Khalil in order to find proof of the fact that uh, if you have Lipschitz continuity, then you will get uh, unique so you will get existence of unique solutions. Okay, uh, but 
we simply go ahead and assume it and this will help us to talk about equilibrium and stability in the sense of Lyapunov in the upcoming session. All right, so this is where we will stop. Uh, thank you all for attending and let's meet again soon. Bye.